We continue our examination of the subjects delivered to the public through Edgar Cayce from what he called his source. The source regularly spoke of the value in choosing to remember our dreams as messages from the divine part of ourselves. The father of modern day dream therapy and devotee of Cayce's work, Henry Reed, offers us a view of dreaming I had never been exposed to in all my years of research. He says, dreaming on behalf of others is one of the best incentives to remember our dreams. Henry shared his maverick journey of bringing dream state to a new, more useful level for humanity. And if somebody mentioned a dream at a party, everyone would make a joke about it, you know? Mm -hmm. There was really no way for people to talk about dreams the way they talk about the stock market, about the weather, about their kids. Dreams were isolated as a topic for professionals to deal with. All right? Yeah. That was the attitude when I was a graduate student there, and you'd read about it, that uh, a, a counselor maybe helped somebody because they interpreted somebody's dream. Well, <clears throat> a friend of mine who was uh, our college president when, I, when we were at Pomona College, he was, oh, I was a graduate student, James Terrell. He's won one of those genius awards now, you know. Mm -hmm. Back then, he was just one of my classmates. He was telling me about these dreams he had. Uh, he, he, he had this fantastic studio on the beach in Santa Monica, and he had no visible means of support. And I asked him, well, James, how did you get this place? He said, well, I had a dream. My father, who's dead, he came to me and he showed me this house. He said, you could have a studio here for free. And he said, I drove all over LA looking for this house, and I found it right here. And it was a man who wanted the place re renovated, and I'm good at carpentry, so he's given me this place. And that's fantastic. And then a couple weeks later, I said, Jim, where have you been? He said, oh, I had a dream. A friend of mine was upset in San Francisco. One of my motorcycle up there, and they were in trouble. I was able to help them out. And I said, James, where did you learn how to dream like this? We're not learning about dreams like this in school. To us, you know, it's a medical sample. You're using dreams to steer your life, to do these creative things. Where did you learn about that? He said, Edgar Cayce. Aha. Uh -huh. Edgar Cayce. <laughs> I hadn't heard of Edgar Cayce. He explained to me a little bit about Edgar Cayce. And to me, he was a person who, when he was asleep, was a lot smarter than he was when he was awake. And I was <laughs> studying amnesias, multiple personalities, trying to understand what it is in the personality that shifts as to your memory. How come a person could be amnesic for who they are but still speak English? Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of weird. Yep. And they still have their talents. So here's a guy I thought was kind of curious, you know, that he had these talents when he was asleep. This is an extremely passionate interview, so hang on to your seat because Henry does not pull any punches. For the full interview, go to cmn.tv.